Choice of entity, shifting of income for tax savings, problem three. A calendar year S corporation has 100 shares of outstanding stock. At the beginning of the year, Corn owned all 100 shares. On September 30th, he gave 20 shares to his brother and 35 shares to his daughter. The S corporation's ordinary income for the year was $242,000. What portion of this income must each shareholder include in income? This one's pretty straightforward and interesting. If you see the, if you watch the previous problem, I did something very similar partnerships and you're going to see S corporations. We also do something very similar. So the idea here is that we've got somebody that owns all the shares of a S corporation of S corporation. Remember our symbol for S corporation. Remember S corporation is a disregarded entity. So it looks like a square on top. It has a flat bottom on the top. Let me rewrite that, make it a little bit clearer. To, so, so you see the flat bottom, it's got a flat bottom on the top and then towards the bottom, it has basically a triangle type approach. So flat, and then it's got a little triangle at the bottom, and then obviously another one there. So that's an S corporation. And the idea here is that corn owns all of the stock, all 100, corn's an individual, corn owns all the stock of S corporation from January 1st, beginning of the year, until September 30th, 930. And then October comes into play, okay? And by the way, if you were like wondering, well, how did you know it was January 1st? I'll explain that in a moment. I'll explain that. And then for the rest of the year, we've got the S Corporation. Now we have three owners. We've got Corn, and Corn now owns um, basically 45 shares. So Corn owns 45%. And then Corn's brother owns 20%. So we're just going to say brother. It's also an individual, so brother of corn. We're gonna call this party brother, 20%. And then corn's daughter owns 35%. Owns 35%. So we'll put daughter 35%. And what the question is asking us to do, this is October 1st, October 1st through 1231. The question is asking us basically what portion of the income must each shareholder report, including income? Okay, and there's two hundred forty-two thousand dollars of income. So that's the question: is how do we allocate this income? Now, this is an S corporation. Remember, if it says corporation, doesn't say S, then we always assume it's a C corporation. But if it's, we're told that there's a subchapter S selection, or it's an S corporation, we assume it's an S corporation and it's a pass-through entity, not treated like a C corporation. That's the first thing to understand. Okay. Second thing is that there's a few rules when it comes to tax, or a few assumptions that we make that are they're very reasonable assumptions to make. So in this question, you're not told like what the what the year end is or what the year is for the business because different different businesses can have different years. You can have fiscal years, you know, depending on the industry. Like you might have a skiing business that you know their business they do a lot of business November, December, January, February, March, April. Of course, in the northern hemisphere, right? Southern hemisphere would be the opposite. But you get the idea that certain businesses they're not going to be January first to December thirty first. Maybe the Halloween business, right? They they they're, you know they're going to end their operations probably October thirty first, right? That's after that there's not really anything going on. So the idea is that it makes sense for them kind of to have their last day of their year be October thirty first. So most businesses, um, a lot of businesses have calendar year and we're told this one's calendar year in the problem. Okay. If I didn't tell you it's calendar year and I didn't say anything, we assume it's calendar year. That's the first assumption that we make in tax. If you're not told what the year end is, it's a calendar year business because almost all businesses, they are calendar year. Almost all of them are. There's obviously again exceptions. The next thing is when you're allocating items of income, loss, deduction, gain to different owners during the year, where there's different percentages, we're going to do a daily approach. We're going to do a daily allocation. So it's a daily method that we compute. So it's a daily method. And unless you're told it's a leap year, we assume there's 365 days in the year at issue. So 365 days is what we assume. Unless you're told leap year, of course, 366. And then February, of course, is the year that where the, where the difference is. Okay, where the difference is. And you're going to see our formula we use. It's going to make sense. So where we start is we take the income that needs to be allocated here. Here, there's $242,000 by the S corporation. And we start off, and the easiest way to do this, we're in the, in the past problem, we had a partnership. In a, in a previous problem, we did 
an allocation like this where an owner sold their interest, you know, partway through the year and they completely left. This one, someone's basically keeping, they're, they're selling, they're giving some of their stock away. So they're no longer a hundred percent owner, but then they continue to be an owner. So it's a little bit more complex than that one. So the best way to do this, and this is, a, this is the way I teach it is the best thing to do is to start off by basically taking the, um, the number the what you do is you, you basically take the amount of income, which here is $242,000. And then you want to divide, if it's an S corporation, you want to divide by the number of shares, the number of shares. So you want to divide by the number of shares, which here is 100 shares. So it's a little bit different from the partnership example, because that one, we didn't really, we had equal percentage with a partnership. You don't have the number of shares. This one you do. So when you take 242,000 divided by the number of shares, you're going to get, and there's different ways to do this calculation. So if you do it a different way and it gets the same answer, you're good. You're good. But this is the best way because again, the number of shares change. Corn has a hundred shares here. Then corn goes to 45 shares and brother has 20 shares and daughter has 35. So it makes it easy in that sense. Well, so when you do 242,000 by the number of shares, that means that there's going to be $2,000 $420 of income per share allocated to each owner. And with S corporations, there's no way around it. You have to allocate it by the number of shares. It's the only way to do it. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to get that on a daily approach. Okay. We want to get that on a daily approach. So what we are going to do is we're going to take that $2,420 per share for the year. And we're going to divide that by 365 days, 365 days. So when you do that, and we're going to round to four, um, decimal places, you get $6, 6.6301. And again, that is per share per day. And the idea here is that with an S corporation, you're going to have each person owning a certain number of shares. So you can use that amount. You can use that amount. And now what we're going to do is we're basically going to set up each person there and calculate their amount. Corn's obviously going to be the most challenging. And the reason why is because of corn, we're going to have to add two numbers together. We're going to have to do um, January 1st to um, 9.30 to September 30th. And then we're going to have to do the others, um, brother and daughter. Let's start by doing brother and daughter, okay? Let's start by doing brother and daughter. And by the way, another reason you can do brother and daughter first is that there is another way to calculate this by subtracting if you want to do that approach. I'll do both. I'll show you both because you can use the shortcut method, which I'll show you, but I want to do both ways to show you that this works out for everybody. Okay. So let's calculate brothers first. So to calculate brother, what you need to do is you need to count the number of days between October 1st and December 31st. So again, 365 day year. So how many days are in December? 31. So I'll just go ahead up here and put it up here. So October, November, December. The good thing about this is that's a full month. So October has 31 days in the year, right? Think about the song. 30 days has September, April, June, and November, all the rest of 31, except February, right? So October has 31, November has 30, December has 31. If you add those together, that's going to be 92. Sorry, I put 91. 92 days. Let me, let me erase. Just make sure that's clear. 92 days. So over here, the number of days here, you can just take 365 minus 92, and that's going to equal 273 days just by subtracting. That's how you get that rather than calculate, you know, January, February, March, April, and all, all together. You can do that if you want to check your work, but it's 273. 365 minus 92 is 273. Okay, so let's do brother first. And the way that we do this is we take the number of shares that brother has, which is 20. Okay, so brother has 20 shares. We're going to multiply that by the amount per day. So let's start with that. Let's put, let's put the amount per day up there. 6.6301. And, and I rounded to four decimal places. I told you that. Okay. And we're going to multiply that by the number of shares. That's 20 shares. And then we multiply it by the number of days, which is 92. So for brother, brother's total income to be reported, when you multiply those numbers together, that's going to equal 12,000 
$199 when you uh, round to the nearest dollar. Okay, so that's brother's portion. So 6.6301 times $20 per, I'm sorry, times 20 shares, my apologies, times 92 days, right? That's 92 days. And that gives us $12,199. Go ahead and calculate that. I mean, and you can kind of see it's about that, right? Six times 20 is around, um, obviously there's a little bit more than six, uh, but that rounds about 120. And if you take 120 times um, 100, it would be about 12,000. Of course, this is 0 0.6301, so it's actually a little bit more than 12,000 makes sense. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, so for daughter, I'll do daughter below here. We do the same calculation, 6.6301 times, now daughter has 35 shares. You multiply that by the number of days, again, because over here on this side, daughter has nothing. I'm sorry, on the left side, daughter doesn't own anything, only on the right side. That's 92 days. So when you multiply that, you're going to get $21,349 for daughter. Rounded to nearest dollar for daughter. So those are the numbers for brother and daughter. We're done with brother and daughter. Now, there's a shortcut here. You could add these two numbers together, 12,199 plus 21,349, get that sum and subtract that from $242,000. And because the only other owner here is corn, that would be your answer which is $208,451. So go ahead and stop the video and try that. And I'm going to show you the actual approach that you're supposed to do, that we need to do, okay? But if you want to add that together, 12199 plus 21349 and then subtract that away from $242,000, from $242,000, you will get 208451000 Okay, you'll get that. You'll get $208,451,000, okay? Just so you know, that's that's what you're going to get. By the way, there's rounding involved. I'm rounding to the nearest dollar. So it's, it might be off by, by a dollar or two, rounding. So if you're like, oh, I don't get $242,000, I'm off by a dollar or two, it's rounding, just so you know. I'm telling you to round to the nearest dollar, and that's also I'm going to do the full approach in a moment. So that's brother and daughter's amount, 12199 rounded to nearest dollar. Again, rounding using four decimal places for the number of share, the amount per day. And then 21349 for daughter. Okay, so now I'm going to give myself a little bit of room over here on the left side. I think you've gotten the point with my, my diagram and stuff, right? That on this side, corn owned all 100%. So that's still the case. I'm erasing it just to give myself some room because we have to calculate... Um, what's going on over here. All right, so just put a little line here. We're going to do corn's calculation now. So corn is going to have basically two rows. So first, and we do the same thing. So for corn, first thing, let's do the 100% let's do the hundred percent ownership. So we just do the same formula. We take three, sorry, three, where I get three? Let's take 6.6301 times the number of shares, so corn owns 100 shares, and multiply that by 273 days. And when you multiply that number, you're going to get $181,002 when you round. Again, round to the nearest dollar. Oops, got a little excited. $181,002. Okay, so now that's just, that's just this portion. Now we got to do this portion here. And that's going to be the same calculation, 6.6301. Okay, let me give myself a little bit more room to do the sum below here. Setting it up, making it clear for you to understand. Okay, setting it up. All right, there we go. So 6.6301, so from October 1st to December 31st, how many shares? Corn have corn had 45. So 45 shares. Multiply that by 92 days. And that number, when you multiply out, equals $27,449. $27,449. Now we add those two together because corn, you have to add those two portions, right? You have the two chunks, two changes during the year. When we add those two numbers together, we're going to get, and by the way, remember there's rounding here. 
I rounded those numbers to the nearest whole whole number. 208,208,451. Two $208,451. That is corn's amount. And by the way, if you add these three numbers, 208,451 plus 12,199 plus 21,349, I know that equals a nine right at the end, which you're like, okay, well, that's not $242,000. Again, it's because the rounding of a dollar at the end. I'm rounding for a dollar. Okay, so I rounded to the nearest dollar for that one. So that's why. So it's off by about a dollar um, when you when you calculate those numbers. So just keep that in mind. But that is how we calculate these numbers. So brother and daughter over here, and then corn on the left side. We did we had to do basically the two different periods of time, and we use that calculation where you take the the daily amount per share of income, multiplied by the number of shares, and multiplied by the number of days. And then you get, you get the number. And remember, corn, we had to add those two numbers together because it was two periods. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. Again, remember, four decimal places, that's what we used when we calculated the amount um, per day, per share. And also, we round to the nearest uh, whole dollar for our calculations for brother, uh, daughter, and corn for the amount that they of income that's actually allocated to them.